All right, so our last coordinate system that we're going to use for triple integrals is the spherical coordinate system. Um, so I've drawn, um, admittedly, a bad sphere. It doesn't look centered. It's supposed to be centered at the origin. So sphere of radius rho. So the, the spherical coordinates are um, rho. So this is a Greek rho, um, r h o. Okay, and, and this is the sort of sphere radius, okay? Now, once you're on a sphere, you need two coordinates to specify your position, right? This is something we know because we, we live on something pretty close to a sphere. If you want to specify your position on a sphere, you need to know your latitude and your longitude, right? Um, so your latitude is, is measured this way going around the sphere, or this way if you like, um, your latitude can be thought of an, in terms of an angle, this angle here, okay? Measured from the positive z axis. So this angle we call phi, or phi, depending on how you like to pronounce your Greek letters. Um, this is called the azimuthal angle. Don't worry, there won't be a vocabulary quiz. Okay, so phi gives the latitude essentially, right? It tells you kind of, you know, uh, tells you where this way you should be on the sphere. Okay, um, notice that um, rho can be any positive real number. Um, phi Phi goes from 0 to pi because you start here, north pole is 0. This is a 90 degree angle. You've gone through pi over 2. Angle of pi, you're down at the south pole, right? That's the full range of, of latitudes going from 0 to pi, right? North pole to south pole, there's nowhere to go after that. All right, what's the remaining, uh, what's the remaining coordinate? Um, so the remaining coordinate, theta, we know how to, well, I don't know, just to be complete, there's theta. Um, this is your polar angle, okay? And, and this is actually the same theta that we had in polar coordinates, okay? And it runs from zero to two pi, just as before. And theta is essentially your, your longitude. It's telling you where, kind of as you work your way around the equator, where you should be. So one way to think about how that theta is measured is you can, if you take this point here, so this is a point on the sphere, and you look at its shadow down on the xy plane, so set the z coordinate to zero. You can draw this line here, right? And theta is just the measure of the angle that that line makes with the positive x-axis, okay? And you can continue all the way out to the, to the equator if you want to specify where, where on the equator that is, right? So that's one way to think about it, is, is that you have kind of, this is like your equatorial angle, right? Theta is this equatorial angle measured from, from here around to here. And then you have this sort of azimuthal angle kind of coming up right, through the point, like so, okay? So that's your, your polar coordinate system. Um, so the, there, if you want, you can talk about these canonical surfaces. These are drawn in the textbook, and the textbook does a better job of drawing them than I can. Um, so your, your canonical surfaces are when you set one of these coordinates equal to a constant. If rho is constant, you're on a sphere, right? So you, you put yourself on a sphere, and now you need coordinates on that sphere, the so-called spherical coordinates, which are these two angles, right? Um, so uh, a constant theta, just as before, is kind of a half plane coming out of the z-axis, right? So, and you're looking at where does it cut the sphere? It cuts it along this, this line here, right? I mean, this can continue down to the, the south pole if you want. Um, if you set phi equal to a constant, constant phi, well then you can revolve this around, 
right? You can let theta vary. And as you revolve it around, you'll notice that when you set phi equal to a constant, what you get is a cone. Okay. So sphere, cone, half plane, those are what you get. Um, how do we relate these spherical coordinates back to the rectangular coordinates that we're familiar with? Well, we've got our x, y, z coordinates labeled there, right? We can see some relationships. We've still got our x, y, z axes in here. Well, what you can notice is that this, this is, z is the distance between these two points, right? It's the distance of this side here, right? Um, this line down here, right, this is, this is in the xy plane. And notice that this has to be a right angle, okay? It has to be a right angle because this line is in the xy plane. This line is perpendicular to the xy plane. And, well, I kind of already know what that is. That's r, right? So you actually have those cylindrical coordinates. Cylindrical coordinates are here, right? r, theta, z, same as before. So we've got that in there. In fact, we, can, we could do that, right? We can kind of think of converting from rectangular to, to spherical. So we kind of have, you know, we have x, y, z. So here's our rectangular. Okay. We're going to convert to cylindrical. So x should be r cos theta. y should be r sine theta, z remains z. Now we're using cylindrical coordinates. Okay. Um, now, how do we get from cylindrical to, to spherical? Well, in fact, all we have to do is we've got to deal with the r and the z, right? Theta is the same in both coordinate systems. Theta is shared by the cylindrical and, and spherical coordinates. It's the same polar angle as always. So the relationship, well, it's sitting here in this right angled triangle. Okay, let's redraw it. Okay, we have rho, we have z, we have r, and we know that this angle down here, that's phi. And Basic geometry would tell me that um, there's actually a, there's a rule in elementary geometry that says you have two parallel lines and a diagonal between them. These two angles are always the same. So this is also phi here. Okay. Well, now I have a right angle triangle and I have my phi and my rho. These are the spherical, spherical coordinates that I want. I've got my r and my z, the cylindrical coordinates that I have. Uh, I can use just right triangle trig to get a relationship between them. R is opposite that angle, so I know that R is rho sine phi. And Z is adjacent, so Z is rho cos phi. And so if I plug those in, I've got spherical coordinates. So R becomes rho sine phi. That cos theta is still there. For y, r again is rho sine phi. Sine theta is still there. And z becomes rho cos phi. And now I'm in spherical coordinates. OK, that's the spherical coordinate system. Uh, we still need to know how to write an integral in spherical coordinates. Um, I think we can squeeze in one more video today. I'm kind of, I'm at the end of my um, reservation for using the, uh, the light board, but um, let's see if I can squeeze one more in. Um, set up the integral and we'll do some examples in class.